All right, fam. So today we have the 2024 election map. Now, I believe that this is something that we should be expecting. I don't think this is an actual map for the 2024 election, but it's just a prediction. You feel me? I believe these are predictions. I'm not sure. It may be the actual map. I'm not sure. Look, y'all, this is my first year voting. So if you are new to this channel, this is my first year voting. And I just want to kind of see what other states are at with their voting and who they're voting for, whether they're blue states or red states. I'm just kind of learning as I continue to study as I continue to just look at different candidates and look at the blue and look at the red, even though I have an idea of who I'm voting for in 2024, all day Trump, man, come on now. Like, it's obvious. You feel me? It is obvious. First year voting, voting for Trump. I don't care what nobody say. That's just me. Hey, it is what it is. You know, boo-hoo about it. I don't care. But without further ado, man, we're finna see the predictions of this election map, see whether or not Trump is gonna win, Trump is gonna lose, see if Kamala's gonna win or lose, whoever, it don't matter. Just wanna see how everything may play out you know what i'm saying so without further ado man hit the like button subscribe turn on post notifications let's get it let's go in this video we'll be taking a look at the 2024 electoral map based on nate silver's new 2024 election forecast nate silver was the founder and head of 538 for nearly a decade and so today we'll be taking a look at what his new model shows us about the race to 270 electoral votes we'll begin by filling in the solid states states where either candidate has a 99 percent chance or more of winning so the threshold to cross is very high, which is why there will not be as many solid states as there are on a typical map. Starting off with the safe blue states for Harris, we have just California on the West Coast, not even Hawaii, but we Illinois. do have Illinois, New York, Look, Vermont. I, Mass I, I already knew Illinois, bro. I'm from Chicago. I live in Chicago. I already knew, bro. I'm, I'm, I live in a blue state. I live in a blue state. But guess who's voting blue? Not me. You feel me? <laughs> but I live in a blue state. It, it's it's kind of sad because I just hope that my, I just hope my people wake up. You know what I'm saying? Because I live in a black community, so I just hope my people wake up. But it is what it is. Hopefully they're voting red. I don't know. But yeah, let's finish, man. Massachusetts, Maryland, the District of Columbia, and the 1st District of Maine. While Trump is on track to easily win in Utah, Wyoming, Idaho, North and South Dakota, all of Nebraska except the 2nd District, Dang. Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas, Louisiana, Alabama, Tennessee, Kentucky, West Virginia, and Indiana. So with these safe states filled in for both candidates, Harris takes a very early and very slight lead with 129 electoral votes to Trump's 103. And before we get to the likely states, it is important to note that Nate Silver and 538 have had a very left-leaning track record. In 2020, they gave Trump just a 10% chance at winning, although in the end, he did much better than what anyone could have expected. Biden barely won the election with narrow victories in three key states, Georgia, Wisconsin, and Arizona. If he had lost those states, he would have lost the election entirely. But 538 not only gave him those states, but also North Carolina, Florida, and the 2nd District of Maine. They did the same thing in 2016 when they gave Hillary Clinton a 71% chance at winning. They gave her all of the upper Midwestern states, along with North Carolina and Florida, states she all 71? ended up losing. And so Donald Trump has always been underestimated by Nate Silver over in 538, so it's important to keep that in mind as we continue filling in this map. And so getting to the likely states now, these are states where either candidate has between an 80 to a 99% chance at winning. So these states are going to be more competitive than the solid states, but one candidate will still maintain a clear edge. And so beginning with the likely Harris states, we have Washington and Oregon fundamentally these two states are simply less liberal than neighboring California, and that is why the odds for Democrats here are slightly lower. We also have Hawaii. Of course, Biden's handling of the Maui fires is not going to help Kamala Harris here. That is why people think Hawaii is going to be a lot more competitive than it's been in the past, and that will probably be true as Hawaii is shifting to the right. Hillary Clinton did better in 2016 when she lost the election than Biden did in 2020 when he actually won. So Hawaii will be likely blue, and so will the states of Colorado and New Mexico, although New Mexico is barely a likely blue state on this map. These two states have shifted drastically to the left since the election of 2004, which is the last time that they voted for a Republican. But in the next few decades, New Mexico is going to come back to the center as Hispanic voters continue to shift away from the Democratic Party. We also have Governor Tim Walz's home state of Minnesota. He is surely giving Harris a boost here, and that is the only reason why it's a likely blue state. If Joe Biden had stayed in the race with Kamala Harris as his VP, Biden probably would have lost Minnesota, a state that Republicans haven't won since 1972. We also have in the Northeast, Connecticut and Rhode Island. These are pretty obvious. They'll go to Harris even if they're not solid. We also have the state of Maine as a whole, along with New Jersey and Delaware. These states are just fundamentally not as liberal as states like Maryland or Massachusetts, although it is surprising that New York did make it into the solid column. And the final likely blue state on this map is Virginia, 13 electoral votes, a state that elected a Republican governor just three years ago. This is a state where Trump actually 
actually took the lead in the polling average before Biden dropped out. And the latest polls for Harris are not looking too good here either. So I would expect Trump's odds to rise in the near future. But for right now, Virginia is a likely blue state that Trump is going to be competitive in. Before we continue, only 16% of you guys are actually subscribed. So please take the time to subscribe right now for more content like this leading up to the election in November. And follow me on Twitter for daily political updates. Link in the description below. We're now going to fill in the likely states for Trump, starting off with the most obvious ones, Montana, Mississippi, South Carolina, and Alaska. These have all been solid Trump states in the past, but they just barely missed out on that 99-point threshold. And so we also have four more likely Trump states on this map, beginning in the Midwest with Iowa and Ohio, two states that used to be battlegrounds, used to be in the very center that Obama won by lean margins just 12 years ago. But four years after that, in 2016, Trump flips basically the entire Midwest and had a huge impact in both Iowa and Ohio. Iowa swung to the right by 15 points, Ohio by 11. And so these two states are very much Republican now. They reelected their GOP governors in 2022 by solid 20-point margins, Kim Reynolds in Iowa and Mike DeWine in Ohio. And so Trump's impact for Republicans in the Midwest cannot be understated. If there's any region where he has completely turned the tables in favor of the GOP, it is the Rust Belt. And that is why Iowa and Ohio are going to go to Trump for a third time in a row. And Trump can probably win by a double digit margin there this November. We also have the second and the third largest states by electoral count to give to Trump, starting off with Florida, 30 electoral votes. This used to be a hyper-competitive state. In 2012, it was the closest state. We also saw that in 2000. But in 2016, Trump surprisingly won Florida, and he did it again by an even larger margin in 2020 when everyone thought that the state was going to go to Biden. And so Florida is no longer competitive. You're not going to find it in any list of battleground states. The focus now really is just on the blue wall states, along with North Carolina, Georgia, Arizona, and Nevada. Florida isn't really part of the conversation anymore because Republicans have just been doing so well. They completely control the state legislatures as well as the governorship. Ron DeSantis was reelected in 2022 by a 20-point margin. They also have the two Senate seats from Florida. So really, it is no longer a competitive state. Donald Trump is the easy favorite. We also have Texas, a state that Republicans haven't lost since 1976. Bro, I, Lone Star look, I'm not going to lie. If, if this is how... Now, obviously, I, I still, I obviously believe, or and I know that this is ha it has to be predictions. Okay, it has to be predictions of how the map is going to look. But as a person who is voting for Trump, the only way this can look like this if we all get out there and vote, it is the only way this map can actually look like this. And this is beautiful to see. It's beautiful for our hopes. You know what I'm saying? Do we know exactly if this is going to be the outcome of it? not necessarily, you know what I'm saying? But if we all get out there and vote, like people that sit there, especially Gen Z, bro, this is your first year voting like it is for me. Fam, you may think that your vote don't matter. Bro, I'm telling you now, your vote matters because regardless, it's going to affect you. <laughs> it's going to affect you, bro. See, it's, it, the years before that, we couldn't vote. You know what I'm saying? We was too young. But this year is your year to get out there, vote. You know what I'm saying? Vote. You feel me? Do the research. Don't vote based off what someone else is telling you. Have your own opinion about the person you want to vote for. And you get out there and vote based off the facts and the policies. Please do not vote based off your feelings. This is this is what happens. This whole entire outcome right here with all these different... Look at all this red, bro. Oh, my gosh. Look, I'm not I'm not a blood, but, bro, this right here just looks amazing. You know, look at all this red. The only way it can look like this if people actually vote based off policies. If this was all blue, that's because people are voting based off their feelings. They're voting based off what they heard about Trump. They're not voting based off facts, knowledge, policies. They're voting based off what they feel. You feel me? Oh, I feel like Trump is a racist. Oh, I feel like Trump is this. He is a he is a criminal, a criminal. Like all these different things, bro. But this right here, like the only way all this red can happen is if we truly get out there and we vote. Okay? So I'm telling you now. Gen Z, my people, bro, go out there and I'm and, and vote, vote. You feel me? But this is looking beautiful. What y'all think so far? Do y'all think that this is how the outcome could be? Do you feel like it would be more blue? Do you feel like it be? Do you feel like this right here is how it, it possibly could look, or this is how it should look? You know what I'm saying? Like y'all, let me know in the comment section below. I really want to know y'all opinions on this because a lot of people will say this is like biased towards trump you know what i'm saying because this is so much red and not a lot of blues and it's like bro this is you feel me especially coming from a republican channel it's like ah like it's kind of biased but i don't know man I, I truly don't know you feel me 
I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Things could change. Obviously, we still have a few. We we still have a few more. What well, what is it? It's November. What are we in September? So we got like a month or so before you feel me before the actual um people actually get out there and vote. So I mean, things could change. You know what I'm saying? Anyways, let's finish. Let's let's see how the rest of this outcome go look. State is traditionally conservative, but in recent years it has been shifting to the left. But it's going to take Democrats a very long time to win a state this large and to be able to move all those voters onto their side. So, Texas, for the foreseeable future, is going to remain in the GOP category. Trump in 2024 is no doubt the clear favorite. And so, with the solid and likely states now filled in, the race is neck and neck. It was at 221, Trump at 218, with 99 electoral votes left to allocate. We're now going to fill in the lean states for both candidates, states where either Harris or Trump have between a 60 to an 80 percent chance at winning so these states are going to be very competitive they really could go both ways but nate silver has deemed that at this moment one candidate has a very slight advantage and so beginning up in the northeast with new hampshire kamala harris is the slight favorite it's a state that went to clinton by less than half a percentage point eight years ago that joe biden won by a much larger margin of seven percent in 2020 right now harris is performing somewhere in the middle of that range between clinton and biden she's doing okay but an upside can definitely happen and so you can cannot count Trump out in the Granite State. He came so close to winning it just two election cycles ago. And the final lean blue state, or not even state, it's only a congressional district, is the second district of Nebraska, which Biden won by seven points in 2020. Trump did it, did win it in 2016. And these congressional districts, honestly, are very unpredictable. So Trump could still win. But as of right now, Harris is the slight favorite. Moving on now to the lean Trump states, we have the second district of Maine, which Trump won in 2020. He's probably going to do better than what this forecast suggests. The new polling in Maine hasn't been great for Trump, but honestly, it was a very bad sample. And so in reality, he's doing much better than what the numbers currently say. We also have three other lean states. They're all located in the Sun Belt, and it's pretty obvious what the first one is going to be. Of course, North Carolina, 16 electoral votes are going to go Trump for a third time in a row. He won it in 2016 by nearly four points, by just over 1% in 2020. And North Carolina is a state the Democrats have only won once since 1976, and that was Barack Obama in 2008. North Carolina is not going to go blue for the second time in 2024 because Kamala Harris simply isn't performing at anywhere near the level that Obama was 16 years ago. If Biden couldn't even win the state four years ago, there's no way Harris is going to do it this time around. North Carolina will be lean Republican. We also have both Georgia and Arizona, two states that have been competitive in the last two election cycles, but especially in 2020 when Joe Biden won both of them by less than half a percentage point. Now, the fact that he won them by such narrow margins when Democrats were in a such good position nationwide really shows you that Trump is probably on track to win it this time around because in 2020 when Biden won these states by the narrowest of margins possible Republicans that were facing a global pandemic as well as the economy not doing well all around the world and yes also in the United States as a result of the lockdowns and so Trump isn't going to have to do too much to win these states back Arizona's 11 electoral votes in Georgia 16 were crucial in helping Joe Biden secure victory in 2020 if Joe Biden had lost these two states which were decided by the narrow margins, but also Wisconsin, which also was decided by less than 1%, Biden would have lost the election entirely. Trump might have only won 232 electoral votes, but in reality, he was very, very close to getting to 270. He simply got unlucky in three states. We're left now with just the four tilt states, states where either candidate has less than a 60% chance at winning. These are pure toss-ups. They really could go both ways, but according to Nate Silver's forecast, one candidate still has a very marginal edge over the other. And so we're going to begin in Nevada, where Donald Trump is the slight favorite six electoral votes it's a state he's never won before he lost it by two percent in both 2020 and 2016 and no republican has won the silver state since george w bush in 2004 so this is going to be a pretty big flip for donald trump however it is not going to be enough to get him over 270 he's going to have to win one of the three upper Rust Belt states of Wisconsin, Michigan, and Pennsylvania, while Kamala Harris has to win every single one of them. And that is going to be a difficult task for her, considering the fact that Donald Trump won all three of those states just eight years ago. Yes, by small margins, but he still was able to win, and today, he only has to win one of them. I'm going to begin in Michigan, which is the most liberal of all of the swing states. If Harris wins any of them, it is going to be the Wolverine state first. Michigan is ever so slightly favor to go to Harris according to Nate Silver's forecast. I do believe though that Trump has a very good chance there still. We also have Wisconsin 10 electoral votes and the main reason why Wisconsin is currently expected to vote to the left of Pennsylvania is because Kamala Harris chose Tim Walz who is the incumbent governor of Minnesota to be her running mate and people feel that his impact in Minnesota is going to spread across the border slightly into Wisconsin but the 10 votes from the state will not be enough 
to get Harris over 270. She will also need a Pennsylvania, which is probably going to be the most difficult one for her to win. Pennsylvania was Joe Biden's birth state, so he had the advantage there. But without Biden on the ticket anymore, Donald Trump is the favorite to win the Keystone State, a state he won in 2016, lost narrowly in 2020. 19 electoral votes. That will get Trump up at 287. And what's interesting... So, so we... Oh, so we like... Oh... I'm, I'm gonna get my thoughts on the end because it's almost done. It's almost done. So I'm gonna get my thoughts on the back end. That's okay. Is that this map directly mimics the map on Poly Market, which tracks the betting odds in every single state? You have North Carolina, Georgia, and Arizona, which are lean in favor of Trump, while Nevada and Pennsylvania are tilt states with Trump as the narrow favorite. And then Wisconsin and Michigan are ever so slightly favored to go to the vice president. And so I personally do believe, though, that Wisconsin and Michigan can still go Republican, especially Wisconsin. I think it'll vote very similarly to Pennsylvania. But as of right now, according to Nate Silver's updated 2024 election forecast, Donald Trump is still the favorite with 287 electoral votes to Harris's 251. And considering his left-leaning track record, him giving Trump the victory is a pretty big deal. And it really shows you just how much better Trump is doing right now than he was in both 2016 and 2020. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and... Okay. All right. All right. All right. Let me, let me give my opinion on this. Let me give my thoughts. All right. Let me cook. Let me cook. Now, coming from a new voter, you know what I'm saying? A Gen Z new voter. I guess you, that's what you want to call. Uh, I, I like to see it. I love to see it. You feel me? I love to see all this red. I love to see Trump winning again. See, when I go back from when I, when I remember when Trump was in office, I remember things was things was much better. You know what I'm saying? Like, when he was in office, that's I, I mentioned in my last video, that's the first, um, that's when I first got my first ever car. So, I obviously had to pay for gas and all these different things. I still remember the living expenses being way cheaper because I had a job then. You know what I'm saying? I was 16. And I had a job then. So, you know what I'm saying? I remember when things going to the store, case of water, way cheaper. Things was way cheaper. Now, it didn't get to a point until I got about 18 years old when I realized that interest rate interest rates were way lower then than what they are now. Buying a house, all these things was way easy. It was, I'm not saying it was cheaper, cheaper, but it was way easier then buying a house when Trump was in office than buying a house now. And the only reason I say that is because I want people to go back into when Trump was in office, and I just want them to visualize back then how how life was much simpler. Like, I'm not saying it was 100% easier. Like, no, but imagine just, just go back in time. Think about how life was much simpler, and then come back to your votes and see... Who do you want to vote for? You know what I'm saying? Do you want to vote for? Because this right here, all this red, this is what we lead into. This is leading towards making America great again. Now, if I seen a lot of blue, we, we're going towards back to disaster for the next four years. You feel me? Because if we already had disaster with Biden in office, his vice president ain't going to do no better. <laughs> she she going to come into office thinking that she knows what she's doing in reality. It's gonna be it, bro. It's gonna be living hell over over here in America, bro. Is it, man? You gonna have literally people moving to a different country. The, the the if she become president. But again, like I said, I'm not trying to be biased. You feel me? Now I don't know this channel in particular. I don't know if they're just all for Trump. They could possibly be. You feel me? However, do you guys feel like this is how the map going to be? Do you guys feel like this will be a lot of red, or do you feel like it will be more blues? I mean, be 100% honest, you know what I'm saying? Yes, we all want to see red. You know, coming from me, I want to see all red. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I don't truly know. You feel me? Because the way that people, the way that I'm hearing people talk about how they're voting this year, bro, it's, 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 not, it's not the right way to vote, in my opinion. I feel like voting should be based off a person's policies and what they're bringing to America, how they're going to better, uh, how they're going to, you know, just... Uh, better the American people like that's kind of how I'm looking at voting this year not necessarily looking at it off because Kamala is so-called a fake black woman like I'm not looking at it like that you feel me this the same thing that happened with Obama Obama you feel me when they voted him into office it was because they oh he's a black man the first black president that's what they was thinking of oh, this going down in history that's what they was thinking about rather than thinking about what was this brand bringing to the people what was he what was what was his policies what was he you know trying to bring to america to make america better again like what was he bringing like you talking about obamacare like come on now let's be real you feel me so i don't know man 
Y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section below. How y'all feel about this electoral uh, election map? Like, how do y'all how do y'all feel about this? Do y'all feel like this is biased? Do y'all feel like this is this is reality? Do you feel like you want this to be reality, but you don't know if it's going to be reality? Y'all let me know in the comment section below. Donald Trump winning at 287. Kamala Harris at 251. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section below. It's been your boy, The Pen. I love each and every one of y'all, man. God bless. Stay blessed. Peace.